in Fahad University of Petroleum and Minerals. Okay. And with the grace of Allah, it was a blessing and a menace at the same time. <laughs> My English was adequate. Mm. So they gave us uh, what they call a Michigan test. It's a, it's a level test. Yeah. And with the grace of Allah, I passed that, okay. which meant that I skipped a whole year, which is the orientation year. Okay. And that was a blessing, but it was also a menace because I, there I was doing freshman yeah. year and all of my buddies, uh, all of my homies are <laughs> in the freshman and, and, and the orientation year. Yeah, yeah. So my... Quite strange. <laughs> yes. I thought that, listen, I have one year ahead, so yeah. let me cruise down easy and I don't have to do uh, attend classes. I don't have to do any homework. Typical. Yeah, typical. So, so I spent all of my time at, at the university at the time, mm -hmm. you know, going to the beach, Mm -hmm. uh, playing sports, a lot of sports. I was in the A team in squash, Mashallah. and um, it was fun because everybody was studying their he heads off. You and know, they're, they're working a bit hard to relax. Yeah, and I'm just sleeping and playing sports. Yeah. But uh, like the second semester, I became a little bit depressed because this is this cannot go on. Yeah, and I didn't like my grades. Yeah, so I made my decision and I quit the university and went back to Jeddah mm -hmm. in the Western province. I took a job which was a very prominent job mm -hmm. that paid a lot of money at the yeah. time. They gave me a car, they gave me a good salary. So I worked there for about a year or so. And then, and this is a twist, I remember calling one of my friend's uh, uh, house mm -hmm. and his mother answered the phone. Mm -hmm. And she told me, who's this? And I told her, this is awesome. Yeah. And I, I don't know the lady. I've never seen, you know, it's the customs. Yeah, we we yeah, don't yeah, talk yeah. to them. We don't know them. Yeah. And she said, you're my brother, you're my son's friend. Yeah. I said, yes, auntie. Uh -huh. She said, son, until when are you going to stay like this, a punk? <laughs> you know, I was, I was shocked. She said, well, she said, you can't live like this without school. Yeah. She said, yeah. I said, yes, but I'm, I'm, I'm working. She said, no, no, you have to go back to school. So I said, okay, but it's already Smart four enough. weeks. The, the, the year had started, the semester had started. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the, f in the second month. Yeah. She said, don't worry, I know people. I'll pull a few strings. Uh -huh. Tomorrow morning, you go to the university with my son. I hung mm -hmm. up and said, this, this crazy old woman, what is she talking <laughs> about? The following morning, mm -hmm. my friend called. We went to the university. I'm still unbelieving. And there I was in the registrar's office with a letter from the Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my name and the guy is telling me what do you want to study <laughs> and I'm, I'm as like walking into cafeteria what do you have to offer <laughs> the guy says we have medicine we have uh, geology we have engineering and then we, he, we went to the literature and they said we have English yeah. so yes that's a good subject I don't have to work hard for it yeah. I don't have to study and piece mm -hmm. of cake put me in there okay and subhanallah I did the first semester I was the first in my university. I got an honor certificate and a Ashallah. prize and financial and, Ashallah. you know, uh, it, it sounded nice. Yeah. And it went on and on and on, alhamdulillah, until I finished the university, majored in linguistics. Yeah. But have you ever thought about being, I mean, using that English language to preach Islam? Like Never, we? ever in my wildest dreams. Subhanallah, I come from a westernized family. Yeah. We, since we were brought up, we always spoke in English. We always talked in English. You really? Know, we, yes, my, my brothers, my cousins, and it, we, we were so westernized that it was almost in our blood as if we were, we were born and raised yeah. abroad. Yeah. This is... That's my first impression of you, by the yeah, way. Yeah, this is an inferiority complex. Uh, I remember when I was a teacher, I taught for about 15 years okay. in public high schools, and the, it was a rumor among kids that... Mr. Asim is married to an American lady, and he has a, a, a green card, and, he, and I've never been there, yeah, except for about four weeks in my life. So this is the rumor just because I speak the language, but it's a blessing from Allah, Azza wa and now I value this blessing. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would use this to propagate Islam, to propagate the things that I believe in. Yeah, what, what was like, I mean, speaking English in... I mean, studying English was something that is quite strange, as you said. Uh, was it strange for you that um, 
when was the point that you said that okay, I have to use this use the English language, which is a, a, a different language, is the second language of Saudi Arabia, maybe? Um, yeah, probably yes. Yeah, but I mean, what motivated you to use it that you can actually benefit people in terms of Islam? Well, with the grace of Allah, I started preaching Islam in Arabic in, I think, 89, 1989. Mm -hmm. And this was also by coincidence, because the imam of the masjid next where I live simply left the job, because he was not a Saudi. Mm -hmm. And they had to have someone to give the Friday sermon. Yeah. And they looked in the neighborhood and nobody volunteered. So they said, okay, you do it. You're a teacher, yeah. you pray five times a day, you look like a committed Muslim. I said, yes, but <laughs> guys, I'm, 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 it's not, I'm, I don't have the knowledge for it, yeah. what I think that is sufficient. I said, you're the only one. So, subhanAllah, I, I, I sought the support of Allah. I prepared the, a Friday speech. I delivered that, and because I was a teacher... Yeah, it it was, wasn't that scary. Yeah, you know, so, yeah because you're so, accustomed to words. Yes, yeah, so yeah. I, I, I just delivered the speeches. I led the prayer. And alhamdulillah, they liked it. So said, okay, from now on, you keep on doing this. Mm -hmm. So it ignited in me the urge to seek knowledge. Because every Friday, you have to teach people something that is beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. And you cannot just go and, you know, say, okay, guys, what do we have today? And talk about nothing. Yeah. So I had to do my research, I have to study, I have to uh, uh, prepare something that is useful and yeah. deliver it in less than 20 minutes. Okay, Sheikh, uh, we have we will take a break now, but I would want to ask you about when is actually the first time you presented on television. So viewers, if you want to know when was the first time Sheikh Asim presented uh, his uh, program on television, stay tuned on Inside Huda. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching Inside Huda. We're talking to Sheikh Asim bin Luqman Al Hakim. Sheikh, once again, thank you very much for being on Inside Huda. So, after you became the, the Imam of the Masjid, giving the Friday sermon uh, week after week, week, week after week, I mean, that was in Arabic, right? Of course, yes. Yeah, I mean, when, when was the switch made to English? The switch came after I made a program in Arabic for the channel called Iqra. It's okay. a famous uh, uh, Arabic uh, channel, and I did a program that was with Sheikh Saeed Shalan, one of the prominent scholars mm -hmm. uh, of our times, and he was one of my sheikhs. Uh, and then, like a year or two, uh, one of the brothers called me to prepare a program for Saudi national TV, second okay. channel, in English. Okay. And alhamdulillah, I started doing that, and it took me three years every single week on Saudi television. Mm -hmm. And it was, alhamdulillah, successful. About six years ago, six to seven years ago, Al Majd had an English channel uh, mm -hmm. that was aired only for one year and then it did not uh, um, continue. They also called me and I made some of the programs that until now this being aired, like yes. the one we saw in the yeah. break. Yeah. You yeah. can tell by the color <laughs> of the beard yeah. the difference of, of the years. Yeah. Uh, and the toll of the years on me. Mm -hmm. And alhamdulillah, since then, people were so generous, thinking good of me, yeah. and they're inviting me to do programs every now and then. Sheikh, you have a full-time job. You're, part of, you're, you're a big part of your life, mashallah, is in da'wah. You have your family. How do you manage all the time? And do you have free time? Well, actually, I, I don't know if I have free time. Definitely I have free time. Mm -hmm. But do I have full-time in da'wah? No. Do mm -hmm. I have a lot of portion of my time for da'wah? No. Do mm. I have very little time for Dawah? Yes. Mm. Actually, my whole life and every Muslim's life should be mm. devoted for Dawah. So yeah. even when you're with your family, this is Dawah. Even mm. if, when you're at work, you're, you're in Dawah. Um, Alhamdulillah, I'm working in a daytime job. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a general manager of human resources, public relations, and legal affairs in a company that deals with uh, um, earth moving and rock cutting. Mashallah. And it's, it's a specialized company. Mashallah is very growing. It's they're all professionals, and mm -hmm. it has a very it's a very reputable in, in Jeddah. Mm -hmm. I work between eight to nine hours a day. Mm -hmm. I go to the gym for an hour and a half every day, every single day, about four days a week. So Sheikh Qasim is quite fit. Well, I used to be fitter because I used to play seven days.